Hello everyone and my dear subscribers. Judging from the beta which was held in November 2021, there could be few refinements but I don't think the core gear system will vary too much according to the things they mentioned during 2021 winter convention in Korea. With that said, I'm gonna try to thoroughly cover what tier 1 endgame contents there are, which gear as rewards you get, how to enhance them, and towards the end of the video, I'll be demonstrating how to set up your gears, accessories for engravings and etc. So you'll be doing enough DPS or supporting in the tier 1 endgame contents. And I'm going to divide them into 3 chapters. First chapter will cover endgame contents, chapter 2 will cover Rohando and his tier 1 end gear, and chapter 3 will cover tier 1 gear setting including engravings. Chapter 1 Vern is where you start the endgame contents, get your upgradable gear, and start farming for mats to upgrade these gears. After you quest up to Vern, you have to finish all the purple quests to unlock a bunch of stuff such as Chaos Dungeon, Guardian Raid, plus your Awakening skill, last skill, and etc. When you're done with all of those, I recommend doing one run of Chaos Dungeon first for the 302 gear which are upgradable, and then do the last run after you think you're done leveling for the day for higher loots because you can get into the next level Chaos Dungeon which is at gear level 340. At the same time, it'll be up to you to push the Shushire Continent depending on how much time and energy you have. It takes around 2-3 hours to clear the whole continent, or it could take longer depending on your experience and playstyle. But you will be able to gather some upgrade mats from the quest and unlock some Una's tasks for this area, allowing you more options and rewards from them. Also, don't forget to stop by this area to get a hidden quest for a skill point reward. When you climb down these stairs, there's going to be 3 rats. Kill them all until they drop a quest which leads you to a skill point potion at the end of the quest. For other skill point rewards, you can check the item library, search skill points, and see where and which quest you can acquire them from. The objective for you from this point, whether you've cleared the Shushire Continent or not, is to upgrade your gear to 340 for your first weekly Void Dungeon. The Void Dungeons are 15 to 20 minute dungeons which is like an introductory raid to the whole Lost Ark style party involvement requiring boss gimmicks. I'll come back to the Void Dungeon later in the video. What you need to focus on is gathering these materials for weapon and gear upgrades and they come from variety of contents. You can get these mats from Chaos Dungeons, Daily Guardian Raids, Weekly Guardian Raids, Daily Unas Tasks, Weekly Unas Tasks, and then there's the cube and the tower. The tower will have a couple of skill point rewards, and it will give you a lot of experience points for combat level. Also, in the sailing contents, there are a number of islands which individually have its own story and quests. Exploring these islands can give you what's called the island's heart, its Unas task, various mats, and etc. I wish I can give you a better idea of the island rewards, but the developers will probably adjust the drop table fit to the contents in West, so covering this at this moment will probably cause some confusion. So, with the mats gathered, upgrade your gear until 340 so you can enter the weekly void dungeon. What you mainly need from these dungeons initially are these mats to craft the purple gear and the accessories. In the second dungeon, you can get the gear itself so you can use them or dissolve them to get the match to craft the gear for the missing part per se. You can also pay 30 gold for additional loot for accessories and upgrade mats, but the crafting orb is not included. You will be able to craft or check how many mats you need from this NPC located south of Vern Castle. When I checked the KR version, they gave you 5 green orbs from the first dungeon and 8 from the second dungeon. I needed 2 of the green orbs for each part so you can make 5 pieces of the equipment for the gear set effects and make the weapon next week as the weapon requires 5 of the green orbs. After you've crafted them or earned them, go to the gear upgrade NPC who you will hate in the future and simply transfer your blue gear to your purple gear and your new purple gear will inherit the enhancement of the blue gears. There is no failing in gear transfer, so don't worry. 
In regards to the accessories at this point, if you are a DPS class, just try to use the critical, specialty, and agility accessories. If you're a support, try to use the specialty and agility accessories. What you'll see in these accessories aside from the stats are engraving points which are like passive boost to your character, and I'll come back to the engravings in chapter 3 and explain more in detail. Back to the purple void gear, getting 2 pieces of this gear set will give you 8% attack speed boost, and 5 pieces will give you 10% damage boost. The gears will help you get through the guardian raids and ultimately clear the Rohando void dungeon which is the next step. Chapter 2 so from here on, the objective is again to gather the mats from the daily and weekly contents, explore the islands, finish up all the subquests if you haven't done them, and upgrade your gear up to 460. Don't forget to open up your calendar where it shows daily events such as Chaos Gate, Field Boss, Appearances, and etc. as you can loot special mats from these events. Reaching gear score of 460 will enable you to go to the Rohando continent well, you will progress through new storyline. Clearing the blue main quest in this continent will open up the Rohendo Void Dungeon. In the Rohendo Void Dungeon, you will be able to get the legendary gear set which has higher stats than the purple gear you are using. Same procedure as the purple equipment, either get the mats or gears and then transfer your purple gear to your legendary gear. So once you've set up your gear up to 6 sets of legendary gear, this is where chapter 2 ends and chapter 3 starts. Chapter 3 This is probably the point where people will start making use of the auction house, buying and selling the accessories, engraving books, and ability stones for gold. Before I get into the details, please bear in mind that this game has currently progressed up to tier 3 contents in the previously released regions, and Smallgate did say they either already have or are working on localizing Legion Raid contents for the West release, which are tier 3 contents. So keep in mind that investing a lot of resources, and by resources I mean gold, during tier 1 stage of the game can all go to waste when tier 2 and tier 3 contents come out. With that said, let's get into it. From the Rohendel dungeons, they start giving out the legendary grade 2-1 accessories meaning 2 engraving effects in 1 accessory, 1 with 1 level, and 1 with 1 to 2 levels. These engravings are like a passive for your character, which will mega boost your character's abilities and damage output. This is what the engraving UI looks like. Basically, each engraving point fills them up, and filling up 5 activates 1 level of the engraving. Grudge engraving for example, Getting 5 points on an engraving gives you 5% attack increase, but the damage you take increases by 20%. But getting 15 points will give you 20% damage boost while you still take the 20% increased damage, and that's sort of how most of the damage related engravings work in this game, give and take. There are 3 ways to earn these engraving points. There are the books, the accessories, and the ability stone. In tier 1, it looks like the West is going to have two grades of the engraving books, the green and the blue. You have to learn 20 of the same book to activate three engraving points, which then can be equipped. Learn green and blue grades to activate six engraving points for that specific ability. You can also equip two of the same type, which gives you 12 engraving points in total. For DPS classes, the popular engravings for tier 1 are probably going to be the Grudge, Adrenaline, Supercharge, and Fast Casting. Sharp Blunt is also a very nice engraving with 55% crit damage buff, but just like the other engravings, it also has penalty and in order for Sharp Blunt to be effective, your crit rate has to be very high. There's a whole lot of math equation in regards to the Sharp Blunt, I will handle this topic later in another video. For support classes, probably heavy armor and the class engraving which allows or enhances their ability to heal. Now the ability stones is where the gacha system kicks in. For tier 1, there will be a legendary stone with 18 possible positive engraving points. The reason why I said positive is because the stone also has a penalty which you want to fail as much as possible. 
because succeeding 5 points on the penalty will also activate the penalty engraving. So in case of the western version, I think a 6, 6 stone of the valid engravings is a very usable stone in my perspective. And a 6, 7 would be like a end spec stone in tier 1. With a 6, 7 stone, you can get 25 points in total with the engraving books and ability stone combined, which now leaves the accessories. There are 5 different parts of the accessories, each with possible 3 points which gives you 15 points. Which then means in total you have 40 points to spend, meaning you can max 2 engravings and activate another level 2 extra engraving. This is how you would be able to set up for a 3x2 and then level 2 for example. This is probably the end end setup for tier 1. But realistically, I don't think this is necessary at all since you know for a fact that there is going to be tier 2 and tier 3. To max 2 engravings and activate another level 2, I can assure you that you won't be able to farm these and you would have to buy them from the auction house. I honestly have no idea how demanding of the engravings for the tier 1 contents are going to be in the west. But since we know for a fact that the game will progress up to tier 3, investing too much resources for tier 1 I personally think is a waste. So what would be a realistic setup? I'll use Korea for example. Our standard for a DPS class in the beginning stages of tier 3 contents was this. Level 3 grudge and level 1 class engraving. I think this is a realistic setup and it should be able to get you through tier 1 contents. There are two reasons why I recommend one class engraving. It would be nice if you can max it, but it's very difficult because the ability stone doesn't have class engravings on them and class engraving accessories are more difficult to get. So the reasons why I recommend one class engraving is one, Class engravings enhances your character's performance more than any other level 1 engraving. Second, the class engraving will establish your class's identity in its own unique way, making the class more fun to play. I'll use my death blade as an example. A blade without any class engraving works like this. You gather the orbs and when you turn them on, depending on how many orbs you currently have, you get 10% movement buff, 10, 15, 20% attack speed buff, 10, 20, 30% attack power buff, mana recovery of 15, 25, 45% when turned on, and reduces skill cool, 10, 30, 50% when turned on. Well, if you have a level 1 burst engraving, regardless of how many orbs you have, the burst skill hits with 3 or buff. But before you use the burst skill, you have to stack some buffs with skill hits. It goes up to 20 stacks and one stack increases the burst skill damage by 7.5%. So 7.5% times 20 stacks will be 150% damage increase of the burst skill. And after you use the burst skill, one stack gives you back the 5% of the orbs, meaning if you have all 20 stacks, you get 100% of the orbs back. So it becomes a cycle of stacking and then burst skill, stacking and then burst skill, stacking and then burst skill. All classes in Lost Ark have two different class engravings which will completely change the playstyle, builds, gears, and etc. So I beg you to give it a try, get at least one class engraving, and it will completely change your Lost Ark experience. That's pretty much it for today's video. Wow, that was a long video. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.